As a big fan of Otome games, Genshin Impact and Idols, making a project combining all these things has been a big dream of me for some time. And some time ago, I posted multiple videos about drawing illustrations for this. In this video, I want to show you how I use the illustrations there to create a game-like video for Genshin characters as idols. For this, I'll show you the steps and process I used to do this. If you haven't seen the other videos where I introduced the idol groups, talk more about their designs and what I would imagine they'd be like as idols, I would recommend checking these out beforehand. I link to the playlist with the videos here and from now on you would be spoiled for all illustrations I drew so let's get started. The first step I took was to write down what I would want to create, how I would want to realize the idea of making a game using the illustrations I had made. As I said in the beginning, my biggest inspirations for making a game out of this would be my interest in Otome games, Genshin Impact and Idols, as well as some videos I had seen by Kumex of fan-made Genshin games. I decided I would not do a full-on game but instead recreate a visual novel-like game as a video. This is because I didn't want to invest my time into learning programming or a software to program a game like this. You only have so much time in day and right now I want to focus it on drawing or editing. If I had a lot more time I would also have done that but for now I don't. Maybe I look more into it in the future because I've watched a few videos about RenP and other visual novel builder softwares which seem nice to me. You don't have to do as much programming through them. So overall, I made a video resembling a game using After Effects instead of an actual game. I have made a video like this using my OCs last year, which meant I could reuse some of the elements and what I had learned from there. Because of this, the video is more like a story or visual novel with no real choices. However, I would also love to make a dating sim-like game if I, as mentioned before, had time for it. After I had decided on what I would want to create, I went on to writing a script for the little snippets of a story I wanted to tell in the videos. I'm not going to go into too much detail since you'll be able to see this in the videos. A basic summary would be, and skip ahead around 10 seconds if you don't want any spoilers at all for the story. In the story you take the role of a manager of some new idol groups, you meet them and watch them perform for the first time. That's it for the small summary. For the script I mostly wrote down what each character was saying, as well as a few notations for things like scene and location changes. To do this, it was important that I knew the characters' personalities, which I learned more about through where my big interest in Genshin throughout the past two years, which led to me watching a lot of videos and also, for example, going through all the voice lines and so on. And I hope I was able to convey the characters well in what they ended up saying in the story. After I had written the script, it was then time to look more into the visuals of the game. For the characters themselves, I only used the sprites I had drawn for each character. I had two poses, including a modern outfit as well as the idle outfit for each character here. Other than that, I added in a lot of expressions. This was a bit more complicated to figure out, since here are many ways you could go about changing the character's expressions and how you animate them in-game. What I did here was to make two variations for the iris, so that the characters could either look at the viewer or to the side. Then I also added in a closed eyes version, so that the characters could blink, which isn't necessary, but you can choose to add this. This can also be used for the happy expression for the character, for example. Speaking of expressions, here I wanted to include a neutral, talking, angry, happy, sad and surprised one for each character, but I didn't end up using all of them in-game. I wanted this to be consistent among all characters and chose these basic ones because of this. Now for how I actually implemented these expressions, I used multiple layers here. First I'd have the face and hair base, only including the hair line art and color, the face outline and skin color, as well as the nose and some basic shading. Next would be the expressions. Here I used PNGs that had the mouth, the eyebrows, as well as the iris, if the eyes are open, and finally eyelashes in them. Since I I wanted the eyes outlines to change up with the expressions as well and I made two versions for each expression, one with open and one with closed eyes. I could then combine these expressions with one of the two iris versions or in case of the closed eyes leave out the iris. So overall the layers for the face here would be the base and the expression and this would include two versions for the iris and closed eyes, meaning I'd overall have 6 times 3 so 18 different versions for each face here. I'm also including some tips for the process of drawing the expressions here, because this may also be useful for you in case you want to draw multiple expressions for a character as well. I basically only drew the neutral expression and referenced it for the other ones, making sure especially the eyebrows but also the lashes stay the same. Speaking of the lashes, I used Liquify to adjust the lashes for each expression instead of redrawing them most of the time. For the mouth, it made sense to redraw it since it tends to change a lot and for the eyebrows I'd sometimes redraw and sometimes use Liquify. Finally, for the talking expression, here I just combined the neutral eyes and eyebrows with an open mouth, I didn't have to redraw it this way. 
All right, and that would be it for the expressions. For the outfits, I just had two versions for each pose. Switching between these using two different PNGs when editing later on was easy here. I would combine the basic body with the head that had the layers, base, iris and expression when setting up the characters later on. That's it for the characters. Now, other than characters, what is also important when telling a story most of the time? That's right, the environment. While I at first was thinking about just using some images I found on the episode's interactive site in-game, I ended up drawing them myself in the end. I I used the episode backgrounds as well as Pinterest for reference and to gather ideas for the kinds of backgrounds I would want to include here though. Also speaking of episode, this actually was the first visual novel-like game I remember playing and I loved doing this a lot. I probably played it from 2018 to 2019. For this I got more interested in other visual novel-like games like Danganronpa which then led to me getting into Otome games which are my current favorite game genre. Although I have to say I don't play them myself, I basically only watch gameplays of them on YouTube. Alright, but back to the backgrounds. I looked at my script and all the backgrounds I would need according to this. Then I gathered some references for each one and drew them. I don't find drawing backgrounds as enjoyable as drawing characters, but it's also a nice change of pace from time to time. Then I also learn a lot from it, especially perspective-wise and how to make objects stand out from each other, conveying the depth of the whole space clearly. I, for example, at first didn't know where I should place the horizon line and looked at how other games do it. Mostly the horizon line is around the character's chest here, but it can vary from background to background. It should just not feel like you're looking down onto the background while looking straight at the character, since they would be standing in a front-on perspective here. Then coloring and shading wise, the look of backgrounds can vary. Some also include line art. Here it's important that the colors fit to the characters since they're in the same world, but also that they don't take the attention away from the characters. I put a character's right in to my background drawing file to make sure it fits with the characters here. I went with a kinder realistic but also simplified background style and I also decided to add in a bit of blur often to convey more depth here. For the stage backgrounds I reused the backgrounds I had drawn for the idle CG illustrations of the characters and painted over and transformed some parts. Overall I drew one outside city, two office room, for idle indoor rooms and for idle stage backgrounds here. After having talked about characters and backgrounds, what are we missing to create a game-like video? DUI elements. For this, I just used some PNGs from the site Sozino. I had actually used these for the previous game video I made last year as well, and since I like the simple look, I decided to go with this. I added a header that showed the current chapter and menu button at the top of the screen, as well as a name and dialog box at the bottom. I experimented with some fonts for the texts and decided to go with the font Nunito for the dialog and chapter names as well as the font San Juan Despi for the names of the characters and for the menu button and some start or exit text at the beginning of the videos I would use the font Sunny spells. And finally we can talk about how I put all these elements together. I made compositions with the dimensions 180 to 1920 and 60 frames in After Effects. Here I then put in the character compositions including the body PNGs as well as the faces. Then I added in the backgrounds, the UI and the text. I also added in a few more effects and music the end. What took a lot of time here was to adjust the text. I copied and pasted my script into there and then adjusted the timing and along with this the animation because I wanted to use a typewriter animation where the text would appear character by character. I also had to adjust how quickly the text would appear or for example that after one sentence stops that there is a small break in the text. For this I did a lot of rewatching to see if I could follow the text timing wise. I also added in fade transitions for the text. After this I then made the names of the correct character appear in the name box, fitting to what was said in the text or dialogue. Next it was time for adding the characters so it would look like they are saying the dialogue. Another step that took a lot of time, I went into the character compositions and animated short blinks as well as changing of expressions by inserting, cutting and adjusting the length of the layers with the expressions here. Next I inserted the backgrounds and added white fade transitions whenever the scene would change. Paying attention to good timing is important here. Another important aspect would be the music. I only added this in the end using copyright free background music. I paid attention to it kind of fitting the mood but since I was basically only relying on music I had downloaded this isn't as professional as for a game where you usually would have soundtracks created specifically for it here. And finally for some polishing I also added in things like a start screen using some elements for video editing I had downloaded or a camera shake for example. 
And that's it for the full process of creating a game-like video or rather multiple small ones of Genshin Impact characters as idols. Now for a few final takeaways. Layer management and organization is really important for a project like this. It's good to have your file folders including all sprites nicely sorted. For one, in the drawing files, then also in the file explorer as well as in the editing software. I basically had folders for each character in which was a folder for the expressions in my file explorer here for example. And in After Effects I had a similar structure. Also also including folders for the music, the backgrounds, as well as the UI elements and effects. If you are planning to do something similar to this, I would just advise you to look at for one the way you usually draw or use files when editing, as well as how you will need to use the files for the project, what files you even need and how you would like to keep them sorted. Just looking more into this so it doesn't confuse you later on is very useful. This also goes for doing all steps you take for a project like this. Before you start, first think about a few ways you could do what you want to achieve and what makes most sense to you. You can use some tutorials and references here as well. Or you might discover a few things may turn out differently along the way as you are working. Preparing yourself beforehand but also not over planning is a good thing to keep in mind here. Just doing one test character and one test scene to try out some things before actually drawing all of them can be helpful here as well. And that's it for a few takeaways. Now I'll show you the first scene from how it is all turned out. I upload the other scenes during the next days, weeks as shorts videos. It will be kind of like a short story split into multiple parts this way, making a full on dating sim using the sprites. Would you be interested in that? For this, you would usually also think about choices which lead to your points for a character leveling up and in the end leading to different endings or even leading to different scenes or a different development during the whole story. This can get pretty complex and is really interesting to me. As mentioned in the beginning, while I'd love to do this, I currently don't have the time for it. I basically have the assets I would need with all the character sprites and expressions, the backgrounds as well as the UI, but I don't have the knowledge and time to learn more about how I could make a full-on game with it. A simple idea right now would be to have the same scene play for each idol group and then you get to pick a character and this leads to one scene with them. It would be a very simple way to create something game-like here. And if you would really like this in more of a dating sim form rather than a idol game one, let me know in the comments. You can also tell me about any other ideas you'd have for what you would do with these sprites or if you were to make a Genshin or visual novel game yourself. And here's a simple recreation of all steps I would use. First is to define a goal, then is to write the script. Next are the visuals. First we start with the characters. Here you can first get the references and draw the base for the body as well as the outfit or outfits. Next would be the face and here you draw the skin or hair base and then add the separate iris layer and expressions in whatever way you would prefer to do it. The next visual aspect would then be the scenes or the landscape. Here you can also first get references, then you can draw them by putting them together 
with the character to see if it lines up. And after the visuals, I would then move on to After Effects or the setup and combining all the visuals. And here I would first import the characters and the landscape or the scenes I've drawn. Then I would determine the look for the UI and get the elements needed or create them. And finally add in the text. And after this, it's just about adjusting the timing and putting everything together, including the text, the characters, the backgrounds and the UI. And for me, finally, I then added in the music and effects. You could also add these beforehand. This just resembles my own process. That would be it for the video. Thanks for watching and bye.